Welcome back to Father and Son Investing. We talk about bonds and treasury bills and notes a lot on this channel. What we really haven't talked about much are treasury ETFs. Those are ETFs that are holding U.S. treasuries. Today we're going to talk about these ETFs in general. I will be using TLT, which is the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, as an example of what you should be looking for if you're considering buying a U.S. Treasury ETF. So let's get started. So think of a bond ETF, particularly a government bond ETF, as a bouquet of individual different government bonds. I'll show you how that works in a little bit. It's a simplistic example, but I think it emphasizes the point. There are a number of different government bond ETFs that you can purchase. In fact, according to this website here at the ETF database, there are 58 different U.S. government bond ETFs that one can purchase. Now, the largest issuer of U.S. government bond ETFs, according to this website, is going to be BlackRock Financial Management, or iShares you're looking at. So that's why we're going to use TLT today as an example. Let's start talking now about why you might want to be considering buying a U.S. government ETF at this particular time. This shows the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. It goes by the ticker symbol TLT. You can see that over the course of this year, the price of TLT has just plummeted. Now recently it has come up significantly and we'll talk a little bit about that here in just a minute. Why has the price of TLT come down so much during this past 12 months? In order to help us understand why the price of TLT has changed so much, we're going to talk about two concepts here. The first one is interest rate risk. You probably understand that as the yield or the interest rates rise, the prices of bonds fall. And as the interest rates decrease, the prices of bonds increase. Essentially then, the risk is that if the interest rates were to go higher, you risk having your bond become less, worth less than what it currently is. And taking that risk should entitle one to some premium or a little extra interest or yield. So that's the first concept, interest rate risk. The next concept is effective duration. Essentially, this tries to quantify using some time-weighted measures just how much that interest rate risk would equate to. We're not going to go into this formula here in detail. If you're interested, you can stop the video and look at all of these details. But I want to come down here to an example. An investor buys a bond that at, at its par value is $100 and has a yield of 8%. However, if interest rates fall by 0.25%, then his bond actually becomes worth more, $103. Alternatively, if the interest rates increase by 0.25%, well, then the value of that bond falls to $98. Plugging all of that information into this equation, we come up with this number out here of 10. That is the effective duration. And what does that mean? That means that for every 1% change in interest rates, the price of that bond would change by 10%. Now that is an estimate, understand, because there are lots of factors that can go into a market, but it gives you some quantitative idea of what you could expect. We're going to turn now to the iShares website, particularly the 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, ticker symbol TLT. I'm gonna scroll down here and we're gonna to look to see what the effective duration is of this particular ETF. We'll see that it says here, effective duration, 16.54 years. So what that tells you is, as an estimate, for every 1% change in interest rates, the value of TLT will change by approximately 16.5%. So the theory behind why one might want to consider buying a bond, a U.S. government bond ETF right now, has to do with the potential for interest rates to change. Of course, the Fed has said that they are not even considering changing interest rates at the moment, but the market always tries to look ahead and anticipate that. Right now, the market is anticipating that those, the Fed funds rate will actually change sometime during next year. It, it, it has been moving up as information has been coming in suggesting that the Fed may be done 
raising rates. So let's just look back quickly and see what the Fed funds rate was in December of last year. If we stop here, we'll see that it was 4.1%. Of course, the current Fed funds rate is about 5.3%. So if we just look for where we might see about a 1% drop, that would be comparing it to January of this year. Looking back at the graph for TLT, we'll see that in January of this year, the price was right around $100 and shortly thereafter went up quickly to about $106, $108. So potentially, if interest rates are going to fall by 1%, I don't think we're going back to the days of 2% and less interest anytime soon. But if interest rates were to fall back to that 4.3% range, the value of TLT would potentially go up to 100 or $108, depending on exactly how interest rates fell. So what is it exactly that is driving this recent increase in the price of TLT? We see that it looks like it reached a bottom here on October 18th of about almost $83. Well, there are two thoughts to keep in mind for the price change here. One is investors anticipating that the Fed is done raising rates and thus they're starting to pour funds into TLT. The second reason though has to do with the people who have been shorting TLT or shorting government bonds. This is from an article in late October of this year and there's a graph here that shows the percentage of TLT shores that were sold short, meaning the people who were doing this thought that interest rates would continue to rise and thus the price of TLT would continue to fall and they could make some money by shorting this. You'll see that this has just spiked here in October. Now the thinking is that the government or the Fed may be done raising rates and so people are trying to cover their short positions here. Thus, they're buying shares of TLT and when the demand for TLT goes up, of course, the price for TLT goes up and similar for other government bonds that people may have been shorting. So at least some of this price appreciation here in the last month or so may actually be artifactual as people are trying to cover their short sales. Now I want to point out something here on this graph because there have been a number of times in the last year where things looked like they had reached a bottom and suddenly the price went way up only to come back down. In fact, you can see that multiple times here, even as recently as early October when the price shot up to 88 only to come back down to the $82 range. So keep that in mind. We may not have actually reached a bottom yet, but that is at least what the market is anticipating. Let's just talk briefly about how you can go about getting a U.S. government bond ETF and the answer for that is quite simple. You essentially can get that from just about any brokerage. You would purchase it just like you would a stock by typing in the ticker symbol, in this case it's TLT, or the ticker symbol of whatever government bond ETF you might choose to purchase. When it comes to liquidity, one of the things that you can look for is the assets under management. In this case, the TLT has $44 billion in assets under management. So you could see that that could be pretty simple to trade that particular ticker symbol. If you were to scroll down and look at some of these others, you may find that they're going to be less in demand, meaning people have purchased them less, thus their assets under management are less, and the liquidity on these may be less, significantly less than TLT, although I would expect that you would find that most of these would be still quite liquid. When it comes to taxes, you're going to want to check on the holdings of the particular ETF that you are purchasing. In general, these are going to be not subject to state and local taxes as long as they're holding just U.S. government bonds and some cash or derivatives, which usually is a very small percentage. However, some of these choose to purchase zero coupon bonds. Those are bonds that are sold at a discount similar to the way treasury bills are sold. And the IRS can treat those differently. So you're going to want to check into this each individually. Let's quickly just compare bond funds and individual bonds then and talk about some pros and cons. Obviously a bond fund, it doesn't have maturity date. That is just a ticker symbol that you're buying and the maturity can be constantly rolling over on those individual bonds within the ETF versus a bond which has that fixed maturity date. The income that you can receive from a bond ETF can fluctuate month to month 
versus your individual bond, you have a fixed rate that you know comes at a certain time. And then obviously the value of your bond fund can change. We, I've demonstrated that to you versus if you purchase an individual bond and you hold that to maturity, you are guaranteed to receive back your full price for your bond. When it comes to pros and cons, those bond, U.S. government bond ETFs, certainly you're getting a little bit of diversification in there and they're typically easier to buy and sell than your, an individual bond, although individual bonds are not that difficult to sell. You're getting a monthly income here versus U.S. government bonds are going to be paying you every six months. And the minimum investment can be less than a U.S. government bill, note, or bond. Auto, you also can receive automatic reinvestment of your interest payment versus those U.S. government bills, notes, and bonds are a little more cumbersome to try and reinvest your yield. The cons here, there are some fees. In fact, for TLT, it's 0.15%, something to keep in mind. Obviously, the future market value, you don't know for sure, and you really have no control over capital gains or the cost basis. Lastly, let's just wrap up this discussion with how I treat a government bond ETF in my portfolio. Is it a stock or is it a bond? I showed you just a little bit ago the comparisons between an individual bond and a bond ETF we see that there are significant differences in there. In fact, this trades very much like a stock. However, it is purchasing bonds within the ETF, but understand that you are not purchasing bonds. You are purchasing an ETF that trades very similar to stock. So how do I treat this? I actually treat this somewhere in the middle here between stocks and bonds if I'm looking at this in my portfolio, maybe leaning a little bit more towards the stock side. Have I purchased any U.S. government bond ETFs? Yes, I have. I've actually been holding EDV, which is the Vanguard Extended Duration ETF for government bonds. That is one that purchases zero coupon bonds. They're called strips and can have that different treatment for taxes. So I've watched that plummet in value over the last couple of years. I actually have purchased some more recently, though, thinking that, again, we may be near the bottom and trying to offset some of those losses should interest rates decrease. I've also purchased some TLT with the same thinking in mind, knowing, though, that potentially if interest rates go up, I'm going to continue to lose money. And that's where I kind of think of that in this stock sort of range when it comes to the portfolio. If any of this was useful for you, please give us a thumbs up and we'd love to have you subscribe as always and share this kind of information with a young person in your life. And until next time, enjoy your investing.